Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a knitter and maker living in Seattle, Washington. And today I'm going to talk to you about all the projects that I worked on in the month of November. Um, I just put my Christmas tree up today so I thought it would be a lovely backdrop for us. Let me just scoot that over. I had to rearrange a lot of furniture in my house today <laughs> to accommodate the tree. Um, but I have no regrets. I love it. And I'm feeling very festive. So, um, yes, that, I don't know, that was a tangent, but here we are. Um, I feel like I had a pretty good knitting month in November. I have a, quite a few finished objects to show you. Some works in progress and no acquisitions, but lots of plans. So we'll talk about that. We'll just get going. I have no need to ramble about nothing. Um, my first finished object, actually, I guess I'll talk to you first about what I'm wearing. This is my Kurshaven sweater, which is a pattern from Stricke Cafe, which you'll hear about more uh, about this pattern a little later. But this is my version. I knit this, I think in fall of 2021. Yes, because I wore it on my first day of grad school in real life. I went to graduate school at the University of Washington from the fall 2020. 20 to spring 2023 but the first whole year of school was online because of covid um, and so i remember that i wore this sweater on my first day of school in person which was winter quarter or fall quarter 2021 so yes i knit this like two years ago now um and definitely i really uh, i don't wear this sweater enough i just put it on today and i was like i should wear this more it actually fits really nicely the only thing about it that is like a little wonky is the neckline it's just a little bit wide i think it just needs an elastic in it and it would lay a little bit nicer but you can't really tell when i have my hair done anyway um but yeah this the fun thing about this whoa about this sweater is that the yarn is naturally dyed with avocado pits um i dyed it myself i was going through a lot of natural dye experimenting which i feel like i want to do more of in the near future but anyway um it's naturally dyed with avocado pits and then i'm hold i held it with one strand of white mohair which you can't really tell from far away but you can kind of see um in the fabric close up um, and you can see a lot of the variegation of the natural dye as well closer up far away it just kind of looks beige um, and for the longest time i think i didn't wear this sweater because i didn't like the color but actually i do really like the color um, I've kind of rediscovered it in the last month. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, it has twisted ribs on the cuffs and the hem and the neckline. This sweater has two neckline variations. I think I did the wider neckline, which is why it's so wide. I kind of wish I'd done the more narrow one, but again, I think elastic would really help fix the weird neckline shape issue. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice sweater. The length is good. Um, so yeah, I should wear this more. I'm going to wear it to my office on when I go in this week. Um, and I've paired it with a little headband. I've been very, I don't know, I kind of impulse bought some headbands the other day. One, because I was watching Laura Penrose earlier, or a couple weeks ago, one of her more recent videos, not her vlog, Mrs. but before that. And she was wearing a cute little headband. And then I was at work the other day and I had my like over the ear headphones on. And, you know, when you're on these work calls all day, you like sit and look at yourself. And I was like, oh, this is actually a really cute look for me. Maybe I'll get some headbands. Um, and they came in the mail and I think they're really cute. So I'm going to keep wearing them. So yes, that's my outfit of the video. I was not wearing this all day, but it is really cute. The yarn is a little bit rustic, I guess. I'm just calling, follow, following my train. You're, you are just following my train of thought here. It's a little funky. The yarn is a little bit rustic. It was a unraveled sweater that I bought at a thrift store. I want to say it was like an Irish wool sweater of some kind so it's a little rustic a little scratchy but the mohair does kind of help soften it up a lot and i'm not very sensitive to prickly wools so i don't mind it at all um yes that's my kursaven sweater from two years ago it honestly looks pretty good there's a few things around like the pickup around the neckline that aren't perfect but all in all i really like it and i love the basket weave texture on it so that's what i'm wearing today okay now to finished objects. <laughs> finished object number one is my Autumn Tales shawl by Ozetta, which it's kind of dark in here because the sun is long gone, but you can't, so you can't really see the detailing. You kind of see it there. It has this really beautiful like braided edge along the outside that's done with crochet hook. 
just kind of like a single crochet chain stitch and multiple strands of yarn held together. It's really pretty. Um, it's the last thing you do. The one thing that I will say is that it's kind of hard to get the tension right, like to keep it loose enough because the shawl itself is knit in garter stitch and garter is super stretchy. So it does kind of add a little bit of structure to the edge, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but I did struggle to like get my tension right at the beginning. I think you can see right here how it kind of curves a little bit or maybe it's the other side. Yeah, it's this side. This is the side I started with. It kind of curves a little bit because of my tension on the, on the edging was a little too tight. But I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a pattern by Ozetta, who is one of my favorite knitwear designers. Um, it's just a very simple garter stitch shawl. I would say it's more of a scarf for me. It's not, it's deep enough to be a shawl. And in a lot of the pattern pictures, she just does have it kind of thrown over like this, but it's really long. So the tails hang kind of long. Um, so the way that I've been wearing it since I finished it is more just like a scarf. So sorry if you hear the scratching, because I think you're going to, I'm, this is going to get scratchy with my microphone, but this is how I've been wearing it is to put the thickest part in the middle and then just kind of wrap Ooh, thickest part in the middle and then just kind of wrap it around like a scarf and I can tie it if I want to. Um, but it's very, here. it's very squishy. It's very cozy. I really like it. I knit mine in Briggs and Little Country Roving, which is an unspun yarn. I talk about it a lot in the October video. So if you want to learn more about that, go back to that video. But I used, oh, maybe 170 grams for this. So I still actually do have a little left over. Um, I was worried I wasn't going to have enough for the edging. So I, I didn't want to have leftovers, but here we are. It's kind of hard to tell. But I left a note in my project page of how much yarn I used for the outside edge. So if you are making this and want to use up all the yarn that you have, um, it took about, I think I used 16 grams for the outer edge and it's three strands of unspun held together. Um, so if you wanted to do this pattern, knit until you, I just said like, leave yourself a 20 gram buffer, but just knit, you can knit it more. So anyway, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the pattern is um, written for Plotulopi. So if you're buying two cakes of Plotulopi, um, and the good thing about this pattern is you like just increase on one side and then you knit flat for a while and you decrease on the other side. So if you wanted to use up all your yarn, what I'm trying to say is if you wanted to use up all the yarn that you have, you could, and it calls for 200 grams and you need to save 20 grams for the edging. <laughs> that would leave you with 180 grams. So you could knit either increase until you get close to that or just like knit the middle part longer. Um, so yeah, you could do more increases because it's kind of this trapezoidal shape. I'm trying to get the whole thing in the frame. You can see like you increase on one side and then you knit flat for a while and then you decrease again. Like if you wanted to use up all your yarn, you could either do the increases for a little bit longer or just knit the flat section longer till you got to like until you got to 90 grams and then keep going, um, which I could have done in retrospect, but hindsight's 2020. So anyway, um, I really like it. It's a nice length. I'm excited to have it. It's very cozy. It's not the softest yarn of all time, but again, I, it doesn't bother me. And I just really like it. I think this is a good alternative to the Sophie's shawl, it's similar vibes. Um, but the shaping is a little different and the edging I think is what makes this so special. Um, Ozetta also just came out with the Autumn Tales Cowl, which is like a, or a collar. I don't remember what she calls the pattern, but it's like one of those cowl neck things that you slip on and it has a front and a back and like a big tur chunky turtleneck and it has the same detailing on it and the like body portions of it are knit in garter stitch and it looks so squishy and delightful. Um, so that's an alternative if you're like less of a scarf or shawl person. But, and that one's knit with Plotilopi and mohair. So it's a little less rustic than this. Mm, excuse me. Um, but anyway, I'm really happy with this. I think it will be nice. I haven't knit myself like a, a scarf in a long time. Um, I have a couple shawls. Actually, all of the shawls. I have four shawls counting this that I've made for myself and three of the four are garter stitch. 
Um, but this is the one that's more like scarfy of the other three. The other three are, well, I have two triangle shawls and then a half and half wrap. Um, and then this. So filling some gaps, lots of neutrals in my scarf wardrobe. I do, this is now we're just really going on a tangent. I do kind of want to make a brighter colored scarf, maybe in the spring. Um, I'm, we're just going to follow the train of thought. I have this like fuzzy kind of chunkier green mohair that I used to make a top last year and I have never once worn that top. I don't know why I made that it's kind of ridiculous. It makes me look silly, but so I think I'm going to unravel it and then use that kind of, it's super like, it's like a, it's basically the thickness of like two strands of mohair or even three. It's a vintage yarn from Penguin. Um, but I just want to knit like a really long tube with that green. It's like a bright green, like brighter than Christmas tree green. I don't know what color green it is. Maybe more like this, <laughs> this kind of color. Um, I think that would be fun to have. just, and just like a really long tube. Um, so that's in the back of my mind as a potential project for more of a like statement color scarf. But anyway, I'm really happy with my autumn tail shawl. I love Ozetta's patterns. They're wonderful. I've tested it for her quite a few times. I just think she's a wonderful designer and a lovely person. So would highly recommend if you're interested in that. And if you're not looking for a scarf, um, the autumn towel tails cowl is really cute too. This would also be a great gift knit. It doesn't take very long. Um, I started, I knit mine in about a month and I was working on other projects in the interim. So it's a good, easy, kind of mindless project. Really liked that. Um, my second finished object, you'll be really proud of me, <laughs> is my sweater for my husband, which is another cool oven sweater. We're gonna have matching waffly sweaters. Um, I chose to make this pattern for him because he Every time he sees this, the sweater that I'm wearing, my version, he says, I, I like that sweater. I think it's so cool. Um, he just likes the, the basket weave texture of, of it. So I decided to make one for him for Christmas slash our anniversary. I said this a couple times, but um, it's our seven year anniversary this year. Our anniversary is just a couple days after Christmas. And I was inspired by Laura Penrose, who also had her seven year anniversary this year. The traditional gift is wool. And we're not really anniversary gift givers, but I've never knit him a sweater before. And like, it just seemed right for me to make him a sweater. And I don't know if he's gonna wear, wear it, but if he doesn't, then I'll never make him another one again. Um, and I enjoy this pattern. So it wasn't too bad to knit up a men's garment in about a month this took me. I finished it just a couple of days ago and I cast it on uh, end of September, end of October. Um, I think I had been working on it for a week, maybe the last time I spoke to you. So I did it in less than six weeks. Um, and I didn't take this away with me when we went to visit our family for um, Thanksgiving and we were gone for like 10 days. So I knitted up very fast. Part of the reason <laughs> I knitted it up so fast is because I had jury duty this month. Um, I feel like most democratic countries probably have this, but in the States, if like there's a trial going on, there's a trial by jury of your peers, blah, blah, blah. I was selected to serve on the jury. <laughs> and so I spent like two weeks of my time this month in Zoom court doing jury duty, um, which was so boring. But it, because it was on Zoom, like my camera cut off here. So I was watching the trial and being a good juror the whole time, but I was also knitting, knitting, knitting furiously. Um, that's part of the reason I was able to finish this. I finished like most of it in one jury day. And then I did the bulk of this also during jury duty. Um, my one concern with this sweater is the sizing. I don't, so there's a, I feel like I talked about this a little bit last month, but I'll talk about it again. I just used the same pattern for James's sweater that I used for this. It's, I didn't buy the men's version of the pattern. There is a men's version of the pattern. I did not buy it because the gauge is the same and like the detail, like the gauge is the same was basically the big reason. Um, and the other big reason was that the men's sizes, like the sizes were the same circumference, but the men's just had like a size or two more than the women's. And the smallest size of the men's was like the second or third size, smallest of the women's. So it was like the sizes aren't different and the gauge isn't different. I don't feel like I need to buy that pattern. So. Um, I didn't, <laughs> but the problem with that was that like, I don't, men's bodies are obviously longer than women's bodies and like th the measurements are not quite the same. 
So I made some adjustments and modifications and I'm really hopeful that it will fit him. Um, he doesn't know about it as far as I know. I've like, he's seen it around. He's seen me knitting it, but he's not the most observant <laughs> of people. Um, he is in some ways, not in, a, in other ways. Like we were at his mom's house uh, for Thanksgiving and he like walked through the garage, blah, blah, blah. Didn't see that she'd bought a new car. Like that was parked in the garage. So, you know, if like, it's not relevant to him, he's not really paying attention. So I think he's seen, he maybe clocked that I'm making this sweater, but I, I have said in the past that I would never make him a sweater. So I don't think he thinks it for him, it's for him. And if he asked, I would just tell him that it's for my dad. So <clears throat> I don't think he has. And if he, I said something to him the other day, he was like, what are you getting me for Christmas? I was like, oh, you know, like you, you have to know. He's like, I have absolutely no idea. So I don't think he knows. Um, so yeah, uh, but what I did to try and get the fit is I measured against a sweatshirt that it's actually my sweatshirt, but he's worn it before and it fits him really nicely. Like the body fits well and the sleeves and everything. So I just kind of used that as my, that sweatshirt as my guide when I was knitting this and I'm hopeful that it fits. All right. Sorry for the interlude. <laughs> just had a microphone issue. I'm having many microphone issues, but that's not your problem. I'm using a different mic now. I hope the sound is okay. Not too different. Um, and we will carry on. So what I was saying is that this is really long on my body. So I'm going to stand up and show you. It's not even going to fit in the frame. But if I'm holding this at my shoulders, like it goes quite long. Um, and I knit the arms pretty long as well. I'm hopeful that it fits because I'm like really, really close to running out of yarn on this. Um, so I hope it fits. I'm a little concerned, but I have enough that I could probably, if the sleeves are too short, I could definitely add probably one more repeat on the body or on the arms with the yarn that I have. Maybe I could eke out too. Um, but I think they'll be okay. I'm pretty confident actually in my sizing. I mean, the one thing is that sometimes men's arm, like, the arms are longer than the body but these it's a drop shoulder and I think it'll probably fit him around there I don't know let me know if you've made a sweater for your husband he's generally probably like a, a large medium or a small large you know like on the cusp of those two sizes um I knit this by the way in the women's pattern it's the size extra large and the men I think it's the size large it's about 128 so centimeter circumference was the pattern size that I used. Um, and I just knit the body probably uh, eight or 10 centimeters longer than the women's pattern called for. Like one repeat, I did I, one, maybe one repeat longer in the arm separation. Um, so I made it slightly longer in the like armhole depth area. And then for the sleeves, I picked up the number of stitches for the size above and then just decreased out to what I think is a good size. I don't think he's going to want like baggy cuffs, but I don't think he's going to want them super tight either. I'm a little worried that the, the sleeves might be too big, honestly, but I did the cuffs like a decent tightness. So they're putting this over my sweater, but like they're not too loose. Um, so anyway, I feel good with how it ended up. Um, I did the collar option that's tighter on this one. So it's, you can kind of see, I guess, if we compare, like this is significantly narrower collar than the one, than my sweater. Um, but I hope he likes it. It's a really nice wool. Um, it's an unraveled sweater. It was an Eddie Bauer men's sweater. Um, I, it's a hundred percent wool, but I think it's super washed. So that will be nice for him. Um, he's a little more sensitive to itchy things than I am. He just really likes to be comfortable, which is totally fine. Um, but I think this will be, there's no prickle to this at all. So I think he'll like it. I hope it fits. I really, really hope it fits. <laughs> if not, I will wear it or I'll give it to my dad. Um, so anyway, I think it looks nice and the dark gray will look really good on him. Um, and you can see the texture, but it's not super obvious. I don't know. I think it, I think it's nice. I think it turned out well. Um, I'm happy with it. And yeah, um, I did do the just regular one by one rib, which is what's in the men's pattern. Um, and there were a couple places 
like on the collar I did the rib inside out um because sometimes my rib looks weird when it's um it actually turned out really nice on the hem like my I didn't knit this one inside out but I knit the collar inside out and then for the sleeves I actually went down half a needle size more than the pattern recommends for the cuffs just because I I knew he wasn't going to want his cuffs to be like really loose um so they're a little tighter maybe than the pattern calls for but they are really neat I, I knit one of them inside out and the other one not inside out I don't remember which one is which now but they both look nice um the ribbing on both looks nice you can't really tell because of the lighting I'd say this one's neater so that's probably the one I did inside out yeah I think it is but he's not gonna tell um so yeah I'm happy with this I'm happy that I was able to do it so quickly I'm glad that I'm done like it's the beginning of December and it's done I can wrap it up and put it under the tree and yeah that was really successful the nice thing about the sweater I would recommend this sweater if you're knitting a sweater for a partner or a male partner or friend or family member for the first time because the gauge is so big it's 15 stitches per 10 centimeters um this one is knit on six I knit on six mil six millimeter needles so it's super quick the repeat is only six rounds so it's pretty moorish um especially on the sleeves as you're decreasing it goes super fast I knit up the sleeve in like a day two days I want to say like an evening and a half um super fast and yeah I think this is a good one it's like a good boxy fit it's generous I feel like it's a really flattering pattern on a lot of people so I'm really happy with this would recommend it um if you are making a sweater for a man in your life or not even the women's pattern I think is great so yes that is my finished course have sweater by Sneaker Cafe number two um okay my next so that's two of my finished objects my next finished object my next two finished objects are little um if you didn't know if this is your first time watching my video I'm pregnant um here I can do a, a little belly update it's getting <laughs> getting there we're getting pretty pretty large um not huge but I'm feeling large anyway I'm expecting a baby in February and I feel like I have been behind on knitting for her <laughs> um but I had some scraps in my stash that I wanted to use up so the first thing I made was this cute little hat um this is the this is kind of a mashup pattern I had less than one ball of this yarn it's the um, Andean Dreams by Knit Picks I got it at a yarn swap at a local yarn store that I went to in the summertime, maybe in July. Um, and I had like maybe 35 grams of this yarn. It's a DK weight, 100% baby alpaca, super soft, super lovely yarn. Um, and I wanted to make a little hat for her, but I wanted to do it top down so I could just use up all the yarn and make it as long as possible. So what I ended up doing, this is just a one by one ribbed hat it will focus what I ended up doing was using um, two different free patterns from Pearl Soho the first one I use I think is called like the ear flap hat or something I will put the actual name of the pattern um, on the screen and in the description box for you but I use that for the increases because that's a top-down hat but it's stuck in it so I kind of adjusted it to be ribbed um, from the top down this is a weird <laughs> A weird angle we've got going on here I need to sew up that hole in the top with the tail um, but there's the crown increases they're not the neatest um, because it's designed with lifted increases and I thought the lifted increases were really challenging with the on the pearl rounds especially so I ended up just doing lifted increases when there was a knit next to the increase line and then I just did um, make one left make one right when there's a pearl so it's not the, the neatest increases, but she will be a newborn baby and she won't care. And I don't, I don't think it looks bad. I think it's fine. Um, so I did follow the instructions for the increases, but then I used the stitch count um, for the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho, which is another free pattern that they have. Um, so I just did the increases at the four points until I had the right number of stitches for the smallest size of that hat which is 88 stitches uh this is on a 3.25 millimeter needle i think um with a dk weight yarn so it's like a good 
gauge. I did not knit this inside out and I think my ribbing actually looks really nice. This is the outside and then the it does look a little nicer on the inside but that's the brim so honestly I think it looks really good. Ribbing is just oh, funky. I feel like sometimes ribbing can look really nice and sometimes it doesn't. I feel like it looks nicer when you knit it tightly like like maybe like half a needle size tighter than you normally would with that fabric but honestly I'm really happy with the fabric that this made. I think it's really cute. Um, anyway, I, I increased to 88 stitches and then I just did one by one until I ran out of yarn and I did a tubular bind off on the bottom. I actually like I was playing yarn chicken um, and got and did a full round. I was like, oh, I don't I this seems like too much yarn to do my bind off with. I'll do one more round. And I did one more round and then I was like, this is not enough to do my bind off. So I just tinked back half a round. <laughs> so like technically this is like there's half a round discrepancy between one side and the other, but you're never going to be able to tell. And it ended up being perfect because I didn't have really much of a tail left over at the end, but I had enough to do the tubular bind off. So I think it's so cute and it's super soft and this will be, I'm going to take this to the hospital with me and she can wear this in the hospital. She has a different hat for when we take her home, but um, it's so cute and so soft. This yarn is really nice. Um, I like it a lot. So Yes, that is a little hat for Tiny. I just call her Tiny right now because I don't have a name picked out. <laughs> I have time, and we have a couple names that we like, but I don't think I'm going to be able to choose what her name will be until she gets here. So I just call her Tiny because she's Tiny, and this is a little hat for her. And then the other Tiny thing that I made for Tiny is a little sock. Isn't this <laughs> just the cutest thing that you've ever seen in your entire life? Um... I have one, so this is like a half finished object, but I will make the other one before she gets here at least. I'm not like in a huge rush to do the other one, but it's a teeny, teeny, tiny sock. These are called the, ooh, some kind of sock, baby sock um, by Maker Maker. This is also a free pattern um, on Ravelry. There are a couple free pa free sock patterns for babies. I started with a different one and I just didn't like the, the heel on it. It was top down and I didn't like the heel turn and so I ripped that out and decided to do this just stockinette one. The other one was ribbed. Um, but I just decided to go for stockinette and this one was toe up, which is my preference for socks. I, I just like knitting them toe up better and I do like a little short row heel. I just think this is the most adorable thing ever. Um, I actually think this is a six month sized sock. So this, I mean, it is kind of big. Like it looks like it will be too big for a newborn, but she'll always need socks. So it's so cute i love it um i just used some scrap yarn from my stash i used this yarn to make a pair of socks for christmas for my dad a couple years ago actually the year before last um and i had some leftover so i have one i need to do the other one but it's super quick um i did the leg in like i don't know maybe two hours not even this is on a 2.5 millimeter needle um, and I had to knit it magic loop. I could knit it magic loop on 16 inch circulars. That's how tiny it is. It's just, it's a free pattern. So I'll tell you, um, it's a 36 stitch circumference, which is like half the circumference I do for my own socks. And then I just did a super stretchy bind off at the top because I didn't save enough yarn to do, <laughs> to do a tubular. Uh, actually it's two by two rib at the top that I did. And then I started doing a tubular and I was annoyed. So I just did the Judy's whatever super stretchy magic bind off or whatever where you do the yarn over um and I think it I mean it's not like my favorite edge that it makes on there it kind of like leaves a ridge but I, it's fine they're baby socks for a baby so I just think it's so cute and like these two things together these two tiny little things ugh Baby things are so sweet. Um, so yes. Um, in other baby knit news, if you watched my last video, you know I was kind of working on a pair, like a little jumpsuit for her. I have not worked on that at all. I'm kind of annoyed by the sizing. I think I'm just going to give up and not finish that. I don't know. I feel like I should just either buy the teddy pants pattern, which I can get for cheap, for petite knit. Um, or just save the yarn for something else, which I think is what I'm going to end up doing. She has a lot of zero to three month clothes at the moment. Um, and I, 
I think I'd rather knit something for her in a bigger size that she could maybe wear a little longer. I don't know. I'm undecided. But at this point, I'm running out of time. So I think I'm going to abandon those. I don't really feel that bad about it. It was, they, it ended up being more stressed than it was worth and it's fine. Um, but that is a good segue into works in progress, which we can talk about because I have been working on some other projects for her. So I, this pink yarn that I used for the hat, I got a couple more skeins of it at the yarn swap in a beige color. This is the color coriander heather in the same base which is Indian Dreams from Knit Picks. This is what it looks like. It's a really beautiful, let's say more of a cool beige. Um, and I had two and a half skeins of this, so like 130-ish grams. And I was looking, I wanted to make a cardigan. <clears throat> so I looked at a bunch of different cardigan patterns and they all seemed to call for more yarn that I had, than I had like 400 yards or more. And I had, or like 350 yards, I had 270 meters um and I was like oh I don't know if I'm gonna have enough for a sweater so I just cast on a second pair of the um pants from the Ellen's coming home set which I have made in the newborn size because that's going to be the outfit that I bring tiny home from the hospital in but so I just cast it on in a larger size I think I started this zero to three month size <laughs> maybe the three to six months no it was a three to six months and I got like most of the way done with those pants. I'll put a picture here. And then I realized that like I I hadn't even finished the first skein and I probably wasn't, or the second skein. I used the like half skein first and then I was still working my way through the first full skein and I was gonna have a lot of yarn left over. And I was like, I definitely have enough yarn to make a cardigan out of that, or enough yarn to make a cardigan out of. And that's what I originally wanted. So I ended up ripping the pants all the way back um, and starting a cardigan because that's what I wanted and I thought it would be more useful because three to six months she will be like kind of spring into summertime and I think I just thought alpaca pants wouldn't be very practical so my options were like make a bigger size or make a cardigan which is what I actually wanted so I decided to make a cardigan um, and I looked for days for patterns it's hard to find I don't know I'm just like really weird about patterns but I ended up making this cardigan which I'm almost done with um, I wanted to have it done for this video, but I had to do some reconfiguring this afternoon, so I did not quite finish it. But this is the, this is a free pattern. It's called the, the button stitch cardigan, I want to say. Um, and it's named after these really pretty stitches in the body, which are called the Estonian button stitch. I really, really like this stitch. It's kind of like a bobble, but it's a little bit flatter and it's so easy to make. I would love to use this stitch in another pattern of mine. Like, I think it would be really cute on a pair of socks because it's so flat. Like, it's not high profile like a bobble, but it has the same effect. Um, and I just like, really like that in this pattern, it kind of makes a lattice almost. I don't know. I think it, I really like the stitch. It's super fun and super easy and very cute. So I am almost done with the body on this cardigan. It's a free pattern. It's written in just one size zero to six months so kind of a large size range but so and what am I trying to say um I feel like my row gauge is on my row gauge is the same as the pattern calls for my stitch gauge is a little smaller but I do feel like this is kind of a big sweater maybe I'm crazy I still don't have the best gauge on like what size is appropriate for what age of child but the yoke is quite deep and then the pattern I'll tell you because it's free it said to knit to like um <clears throat> there were some conflicting instructions that was the root of the issue the pattern said to knit the body until eight and a half inches from the back neck but the pattern also has you space out the buttonholes every 20 rows so by the time I got to eight inches, I had just done the fourth buttonhole and the pattern tells you to do five buttonholes. So I was like, okay, well then I'm just going to keep going and I'll just go until it's the fifth buttonhole. And I was going and going and going, but by the time I was almost at the fifth buttonhole, the body of the cardigan was like an inch and a half longer than when it told me to stop and I hadn't even done the ribbing yet. And it was looking really long and a little funky. So I decided to rip back and I was like, oh, I'll just stop after the fourth button. 
But after the fourth button, I was only eight inches and I didn't want to do half an inch of ribbing. Something was wrong. Uh, the, eight, uh, the, eighth, the fourth button was at eight inches and I would still need to do half an inch of ribbing, maybe even an inch because the pattern has ribbing in it. So it needed to be more like nine inches. So I ended up having to like, I ripped back to eight, to eight inches. And then I just, not that like in the last couple of hours, I ended up tinking back the button band because it's an integrated button band and you make the buttonholes as you go. Um, so I ended up tinking back the button button band and redoing the spacing on the buttons. I've adjusted it now so that my buttons are 16 rows apart instead of 20. So I think it's going to work out better now. I'm, oh, let's see. One, I'm on, this is the fourth buttonhole, and I think I'm 12 rows past it. So I'm going to do a couple more rounds of the body pattern, which is just like stockinette spaced out with the button stitch. Um, and then I'll do the ribbing, and I'm going to do the buttonhole, like, it's. Just, I'm going to do six rounds of ribbing, and I'll do the buttonhole on the second round of ribbing. So I'll have four more rows after, so it'll be like spaced, um, and it will end up being... I think about nine inches long, which is a little, nine, or nine and a half, nine and a half. So it'll be a little longer than the pattern calls for. But I looked at the Ellen's Coming Home set from Petite Knit, which has a cardigan in it. And for the six to nine month size, it was the length, it was the right, it's a similar length to what I'm knitting this to now, which is about nine and a half inches. Um, and the sleeves as well. I so <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing the best job of articulating this, but I had knit most of the body and run out of the ball of yarn I was using. So I started the sleeves. I did this sleeve this morning in like an hour, um, but I made the sleeve longer because the body was longer. And then when I ripped back the body, I was like, I don't want to have to re-knit the sleeves, <laughs> like rip back the sleeves. So the sleeves are about an inch and a half longer than they're supposed to be in the pattern. And so I'm doing the body an inch and a half longer than it's supposed to be in the pattern, basically. And if the sleeves are still too long, like I can roll them up and that's fine. Um, but all that to say, I'm doing some modifications on this pattern, but I really like the pattern. They're, the only thing that I don't like about it is the buttonhole spacing on the button band. So I think 16, 16 rows between each button band is a better spacing to get closer to the dimensions that the pattern tells you to do. Um, but anyway, I digress. Uh, I really like the pattern. <laughs> the only other thing that I changed is that on um, the pattern has garter stitch at the neckband and on the button band um, and at the bottom, but it has ribbing on the wrists, which I thought was kind of strange. I changed all of it to be ribbing instead of garter stitch on the accents. So the neck ribbing is, instead of garter, it's ribbing. And then the sleeves are ribbing. The button band is ribbing. It's integrated. Normally, you would, if you're doing an integrated button band, you would go down half a needle size for the bit for the for the button band. I didn't do that because I, for one, didn't have the needles with me. I started this while I was on vacation, and I didn't have my DPNs with me. Um, and for two, it just seemed like a hassle. So <laughs> this is the, the body of the cardigan is knit on a four millimeter needle, and I'm just doing the button bands on that. And I. I don't know that I'm ever going to button this up for her anyway, so I don't think it matters. Um, but yes, it's really cute. I like the pattern a lot. Um, it will look here. I'm trying to like get it all nice, nice for you. So you can see it's really cute. Honestly, I, I really like it. Um, the other thing that's kind of fun about this pattern that's not super typical is that the raglans are done with knit front backs. So you get, kind of like a little, you don't have to save a raglan stitch, but you still get a raglan line. Um, and overall, I really like it. I like this yarn a lot. It is really soft. I wouldn't use it for a sweater for me because I feel like it would pill really badly. But for a baby who's not going to be moving around that much, I think it'll be fine. Um, and yeah, so next time you see this, it'll be done and blocked so the button bands aren't all quite so curly. Um, but I think it's so cute. And I will have extra yarn left over <laughs> because... When I ripped back, I ended up using a bunch of this skein. I used this third skein for this sleeve, um, but not that much of it. So I'll probably use less than half of this skein. 
but that's okay because my sister who also had a baby this year baby was born in may but she was saying that she wanted some bonnets for her baby in like a neutral color so i will use whatever's left for this to make bonnets for my niece to make a bonnet for my niece um and then it's super soft and great so that's what i will do with the leftovers of this because i just don't love having leftovers laying around so yeah um that is that on that that's my little button stitch baby cardigan it's really cute i just the buttons i love them i really really like the stitch pattern it's called the estonian button stitch look it up i think it's great i love it and i really like this category this pattern in this yarn the sample is knit in like a plant-based yarn and it's the buttons pop a lot more in the plant-based yarn but i kind of like how they're more subtle in this so anyway that was a long long ramble about this cardigan but I'm almost done. So that's great. My last work in progress is my Gia zipper sweater, which is not, I haven't made a ton of progress on because, well, for many reasons. Um, I'm worried I'm going to run out of yarn. So last time you saw it, I don't remember where I was at, but in the meantime, I've knit one of the double knit panels. Oh, it's this one. I've knit one of the front double knit panels, but I'm worried that I'm gonna run out of yarn. So I started knitting on one of the sleeves instead because I think if I have to buy another skein of yarn that's gonna be in a dial -up that doesn't match, I think I would rather have it be the collar section than anything else and maybe the ribbing. Um, so my plan is to knit the sleeve to the ribbing, knit the other sleeve to the ribbing, um, and see how much yarn I have left. And then I will gauge if I need to rip this double knit section out or not. Um, I knit this up pretty quickly actually and I really do like knitting the double knit and I think it's gonna be super squishy when it's done. The only thing about it that, I find, that I'm finding a little bit annoying is that because I'm knitting with mohair, um, I'm holding it so much that I feel like it's really fluffing the mohair up a lot and like a lot of mohair is coming out of the strand. But, it's okay. I think it looks really nice. And you can't, this is an absolute disaster right now, but this is, I mean, that looks really nice, that double knit collar. And I even picked up for the other side and then I've just haven't touched this in weeks because I'm not sure what to do about it. Um, but that double knit collar is really nice. And so I'm just working on the sleeve. I need to, there's like this is everything that's attached to this project right now because I don't want to cut any yarn. It's a mess. Um, but I want to have this finished by the end of the year um, because I just want to have my needles mostly cleared off by the end of the year. It's a good feeling. I, it, I did it not last year, but the year before in 2021 going into 2022. I finished my last work in progress on New Year's Day. And it was really nice. I'm not going to do that next year. One, because I have a lingering unfinished object off in the nether regions that I do plan to pick up in the spring. It's more of a springy project anyway. Um, <clears throat> and so, but it's just nice to go into a new year with no whips. Um, so I want to finish this. I think now that I've finished this project for my husband and I'm almost finished with this cardigan, which I started while we were out of town, I obviously didn't take this out of town with me because there's like 16 balls of yarn attached to it right now. But once I finish this card again, then this will be my only active whip. I do have some cast on plans. <laughs> um, but we'll talk about those in a second. But this I can then focus on and get done because it will be really nice to have. I'm really excited to have this piece of my wardrobe. A little half zip will be perfect. It's a good springtimey color. Um, but it's been kind of annoying to work on. So, um, kind of on the, <laughs> along the vein of not having enough darn, <laughs> I, when I decided to stop working the button band or the, the yoke, I was like, I have all the yarn kind of in a basket over here. And I was like, okay, I know I've used two balls of mohair in this sweater. So that's 50. And so I, I, I wasn't sure how much yarn I had left. I know, I knew that I had used two full balls of mohair in this sweater. And then, so I weighed everything that was attached to this and I had subtracted out the weight of the mohair. And I was like, okay, I have 250, I've used about 250 grams of the wool. And then I weighed the yarn that I had laying over. And I was like, this, 
there's only 150 gram or 100 and 200 grams of yarn here. Like I'm missing 50 grams of yarn because I have 500 total of the main color. And I like tore my pass apart. I was like, I know that I'm missing this yarn. I know that it's somewhere. And I did finally find it. But I was like, it was like 11.30 p.m. at night. And my husband was like, you are mentally unstable. Because I like knew in my heart of hearts that I had half a skein of this yarn laying around somewhere. And I did find it. But I did feel like a little crazy. Like <laughs> tearing my house apart looking for half a skein of yarn. But I found it. And uh, I need it. So I'm glad I found it. So yes, this has kind of been resting. I need to pick it back up. Um, and keep making progress on the sleeve. The sleeve's kind of annoying because the decreases are at, like, they're at one rate and then they change again and then they change again. So I need to go back and look at the pattern and see where I am. But anyway, that's where I'm at on that. I do want to get it done by the end of the year. I think it would be nice to wear. Oh, that could be kind of nice. I'm having my baby shower in early January and like that could be really nice for my baby shower or on my birthday, which is a couple weeks later into January. So my goal is to have that done by the end of the year. We'll see how that goes because I have some cast-ons that I'm really excited about but before we talk about those before we talk about my cast-on I want to show you a little acquisition that's like more of a gift it's not really an acquisition um actually hold on let me just let me just prepare it for you for a second if you watched my baby knits video which is the last video I posted um I talked a lot about baby knit patterns that I love and that I want to make um, and one of them was the Selma sleep suit. And I said that my mom was making it for me and she brought it to me at Thanksgiving and I have it. And it's so, so cute. Um, I need to sew buttons onto it because she didn't have a chance. And I was like, it's fine. I have buttons at home I can use. Um, but it's so cute. It's so, so cute. I love it. She did a wonderful job. It's a very neutral beige color. Um, my mom is the queen of reclaimed yarn so I believe what she used to make this is one strand of mohair which I don't think she reclaimed but I don't know what mohair she used and then the main color which is the creamy beige color is cashmere so this is like the most luxurious baby some sleep suit of all time it's cashmere and mohair and it is going to be so cozy it also seems it's huge so I think she'll be able to wear it um for several months and it has the little fold over arms and feet so it'll keep her super warm she'll wear it when we go outside on walks um ugh, it's adorable I'm obsessed with it it's so cute and this is just like the most beautiful heirloom piece hopefully I have if I have more babies that they're winter babies because they need to be able to wear this I want one in my size it's amazing I love it so much it has this big cozy hood the thing about mohair is that like, people, there's like two camp, they're conflicting camps on mohair and baby knits because it kind of can get in their nose and stuff. But I think the hood is big enough that it won't like be all up in her face and she won't like breathe it in, you know? But anyway, look, we kind of even match in my course oven sweater and her little Selma sleep suit. It's so cute. I think I'm just going to use some little white bone buttons for this. That's probably also what I'll use for the card again. I don't know. I haven't decided, but so cute I can't wait to put her in it Ugh, my tiny girl she's gonna be so cozy and she's the most spoiled little baby ever to have a cashmere and mohair sleep suit I love it I love it thank you mommy um so cute <coughs> I think she knit the smallest size but I don't actually know so I'll have to ask her and put that in the description box below so yes that's my little acquisition I don't have any yarny acquisitions I don't have any yarning acquisitions. Good for me. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by the amount of yarn I have. I would really like to knit my stash down in the new year. Um, I have also, this is also unrelated, but we're just rambling at this point. My fabric stash has really gotten out of hand. I haven't done any sewing since like May um, because there was construction going on in my house and I didn't really have room to sew and then I got pregnant. So it's like, I don't know what size I need. So I haven't sewn anything in a really long time, but I have a lot of fabric that I need to use. So I'll probably hmm, ambitiously would like to sew something for the baby, like a little dress or something like a spring dress for her. She does have quite a few. She's gotten some great hand-me-downs from her cousins. But if that doesn't happen, I do want to do, I'll probably do some sewing of, I don't know, 
I, I need to do some sewing because I have a lot, a lot of fabric that needs to be used up or passed on. We'll see. Um, but anyway, plans. I have grand plans. You will notice if you watched my last video, I was talking about a blanket. You did not see the blanket <clears throat> because I haven't started the blanket. <laughs> I need to, I want, I really, really want to make a bait, a blanket for Tiny. Um, like obviously I'm her mother and I'm a knitter. I need to make her a blanket. Um, and I was, I have been planning for months <clears throat> to make the pressed flower shawl by Amy Christopher's into a blanket. Um, and last month I showed you a swatch for it and I was about ready to cast on, but I just, there was something about it that just didn't feel, feel quite right. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. I love the pattern. It's beautiful. I own the pattern now. I even bought the pattern and I usually don't buy a pattern until I'm like ready to cast on. Um, <clears throat> but I, it was just wasn't something about it wasn't quite right so I was really like gripped with the idea of using a quilt motif and making a quilty blanket for her quilty kind of quilty knits are kind of a trend this year um and I've looked on Pinterest and I was doing swatches and making charts I was thinking of doing like an Irish chain kind of pattern quilty knit which is a very traditional super simple quilt pattern that's just used as squares, but I was thinking I could do some intarsia. Anyway, I came across this quilt on Pinterest and I saw it and I was obsessed with it. I think it's called the Helios quilt. Um, and this picture in particular, I was like, I, that is exactly what I want. Like a traditional quilt motif, but in knitted form and the way that it's knit, like I could do it in blocks. It would be super easy. It would be amazing. And I was drawing out a chart for it in bed at like 11.30 p.m. Maybe it was even past midnight. I should have been asleep. And then I was like, wait a second. This motif is very, very similar to the Stella quilt motif that Laura Penrose has been using. I feel like this is the third or fourth time I've mentioned her in this video, but I think she's great. Um, and if you're not aware, Laura recently put out this Stella quilt cushion pattern, which has this kind of very traditional star motif. The colors are in a little bit different places than the Helios, but... The motif is the same and I was like why don't I just use this pattern that already exists instead of like trying to figure out a chart and the intarsia I was gonna do an intarsia like each block and I was like Laura has already done that work for me I can just pay her five dollars and get the pattern and do it myself so I bought the Stella quilt cushion the day it came out because one I love it I think it's beautiful and two I want to use the pattern to make blanket <sighs> here's my qualm <laughs> I love the pattern as it's written. It's amazing. The problem is that it's written for a 20 by 20 inch pillow, which is quite large. I, by the way, backing up, I want to make the pillow and I want to use the pattern to make the blanket. So I'm going to like take the panel of the front and just block it to make it into a blanket. Laura is making a blanket version of the pattern, but I think the blocks on the blanket are going to be much larger than what I'm wanting. So I'm just going to modify the pillow pattern to work better for me but anyway I was looking at the pattern the other day and I was like oh this is for a it's for a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter pillow which is a 20 by 20 pillow which is quite a large pillow um my throw pillows that I keep on my couch are 16 by 16 and I really like this size um and I think it would work better I want to make the pillow to put on the chair in the in the nursery and I think I would prefer it in this size or honestly, maybe even smaller. So then I started, oh, I started doing some gauge mathematics and trying to figure out how to shrink the pillow from 20, 20, 20 by 20 to 16 by 16. And I think I figured it out. I'm just going to knit it at a tighter gauge. Um, and there's two in the Stella quilt cushion pattern it's written for DK weight yarn and Aran weight yarn. I think I'm going to use the Aran weight stitch counts. So the stitch counts are smaller because it's knit for a larger gauge, but I'm going to knit it at a smaller gauge. So it will end up shrinking the size of the pillow. And I was a little worried. I was like, oh, it won't fit like a standard size pillow. But actually, I don't mind if it doesn't fit a standard size pillow because I have a pillow that I knit a couple of years ago. I did like an intarsia cover for it, and it was my first time ever doing intarsia, and it honestly didn't go very well. I cut my, and my ends aren't woven in properly. Like there's a lot of holes in it. It's not great. But I'm going to just take all the filling out of that pillow and make a new pillow insert with it. Like sew a pillow insert, put all the stuffing from that pillow into the pillow insert, and then sew it closed. Um, so no matter what size my 
cushion ends up being, I can just make a custom sized insert for it, which is my plan. So I did some swatching, just like a very little bit of swatching that I've already pulled out. I need to do some more swatching before I like actually get going for the pillow, but there are more qualms. <laughs> I want to use stash yarn. I want to use scrappy stash yarn and I have these two colors of yarn. These are both Busilla tapestry wool, which is a vintage tapestry yarn. I've used both of these colors of yarn before. I've made a hat out of this yarn and I used it in the yoke of a color work sweater. And then I've made a shawl out of this yarn and a pair of socks. Um, the problem is that for the, basically I wanna use these two colors and alternate them in the second motif of the Stella quilt cushion. So it's the all filled in color star. Um, and then the white background. I'm going to do a white background, not this color white, but a white background. My concern number one is that this is not a super high contrast. These two aren't super high contrast, but I think, I think it'll look, still look cute. I think, I think it'll still look cute if I just do these two next to each other and it's an eight pointed star. So I would just alternate them. Um, I'm less worried about that than I am about the fact that I don't know. I have the contrast color. It calls for like 88 grams of yarn. And I think I have 50 grams of this and like 35 of this. So not quite enough of this. But then when I decided to modify the gauge and make it smaller, I think I will be able to get away with it. Worst comes to worst. I have knit a pair of socks with this yarn that I don't love and don't wear that often. So if I really run out, if I run out of yarn, I will unravel the socks and use that yarn. The socks have been worn, so the yarn will not be in the best condition, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice for my child. So that's my plan. I think it'll be really cute, a cushion of this yarn. But anyway, when I decided to shrink the gauge, I think I think I should be able to get away with it without having to unravel the socks. So that's where we're at. I wanna make this cushion, but I also wanna make the blanket. Here is my qualm. I want to make a quilt and I wanna make it, I think I want 12 squares like there are in this picture. I have, and I'm gonna use the same colors that I showed you last month. So this, Superwash Filatura di Crosta Zara that I've over dyed twice and it's this kind of like greeny blue and then white. So hopefully it will actually look quite a lot like this picture. Um, but I have 400 grams of the main color and that's it. And when Laura was talking about the blanket pattern in a recent video, she was saying she was doing it so that each blanket, like each block of the blanket would use 100 grams of the contrast color so that means the blocks are gonna be really quite large. And I think I would rather have smaller blocks and more. So if it's 100 grams, I could do four blocks basically, which seems, that's not what the look that I want. So I think instead I'm going to just modify the stitch counts on the Stella Quilt Cushion pattern to be much smaller and try and get, because they're currently 20 by 20 20 centimeter, 20, you know, 20 inches, 20 inches by 20 inches. If I can half the stitch counts, I'm hopeful that I can get 10 by 10. And I think that will be a better blanket size. I can hopefully then get more blocks. And if that's the case, then I can get a 30 by 40 blanket, which I think is a standard like stroller size blanket or, or crib size blanket. So that's my plan is to just half this, like do the same gauge as the Stella quilt cushion, but just half the stitch counts. And I've looked through the patterns and looked at the counts and I think I can do it. So I need to do a test block of the blanket, like a test block, not like wet block, but quilt block of the blanket. And I think I will do that before I start the cushion because the blanket is obviously more knitting. Um, and if the cushion is not done by the time the baby gets here, I'm okay with it, but I would like the blanket to be done by the time she gets here. So I need to focus on the blanket. <laughs> Sorry, I've had like a head cold for the past couple of weeks and it's coming back, it comes back at night. Anyway, I need to do a test block of the blanket. So that's probably what I should cast on next. I think I will do that as soon as I finish this cardigan, which I'm planning to do tonight before I go to sleep. I'll work on it while I'm editing. Um, <clears throat> so yes, that is my plan. One other kind of aside for the cushion. I do have one skein of this Busilla tapestry wool. 
what it looks like, by the way. It's vintage. You cannot buy it anymore, but you can actually pretty easily find it um, at thrift stores or oh, it's this way um, on eBay. I really like this yarn. I'm sad that it's discontinued because I do really like it. It's a very sturdy 100% wool. But this is like a pale yellow. I could do the pink and the yellow, but I don't think I like that. The beige and the yellow is kind of cute, but I think the two picks together are my favorite. So, yeah. Those are my Stella plans. So, yes, that this has been a really long video, so thank you for bearing with me. Those are my plans. That's what I'm planning to work on for the rest of the year. I have many more things I would like to make. I really want to, but I think they're going to end up just having to be 2024 cast-ons. And honestly, at this point, this video is so long <laughs> that I think I will just talk to you about them next year because I need to restrain myself and I won't cast any of them on until next year. So I need to just, um, yeah, I need to just save. I need to, if I even tell you about them, then I'm going to want to cast them on and I need to just focus on what I've got going. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. You've heard enough from me. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe. Thank you to all of you who are already subscribed. It's great having you. Um, I love making these videos. It's so fun. And I love reading your comments. And I appreciate everyone who left me well wishes on my last video. And thanks to everyone who watched my baby knits video and left feedback on what kind of baby knits video to do. I think my last video in December is going to be another favorites video. I did this last year and I really enjoyed it. It was like my 2022 knitting favorites. To be honest, I don't know how much they've changed in 2023. I was looking back at it the other day. I was like, oh, a lot of these things still are my favorite. But I'll talk to you about like a couple of my projects that I made that I really liked this year. Um, some favorite yarns, some knitting tools. And then I think I just threw in some random favorites at the end, like candies and books. So um, stay tuned for that. I really enjoyed putting that together last year. So that's my plan for 2023. Um, end of 2023 video, last video in December. And then in January, I'll do a normal podcast and I'll probably do my like knitting plans video. Um, and I do want to do an everything I knit in 2023 video. That might have to be, <laughs> and then like, I, I usually put out two videos a month. If I can squeeze that into January, that would be good because my baby is coming in February and I don't know when she's coming, obviously. So I don't even know if I'm going to get a February video up. Um, so I'm hoping to squeeze that everything I knit in 2023 video in, in January. We'll see. Maybe it will be my first video in February. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next year. I might just be too tired to do anything. So stay tuned, but I will at least get you the favorites video because it's fun and I love hearing what people enjoy. So that's my plan for the year. Stick, subscribe if you want to see that, or just come back in a few weeks. I usually post around the first of the month and around the 15th. So that's when you can expect it from me in about two weeks. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> I think I've talked for long enough. Thank you all so much for being here. It's really great to have you. I hope you have a wonderful December. I hope you're enjoying Vlogmases and Advent calendars and cool weather and festive things. And I hope you are just enjoying the season. It's a fun season. I think we all deserve a little bit of joy this season. So I hope you feel it. Um, I hope I brought you some and I will talk to you again very soon.